Well, yes, praise the Lord. We have one life, but we have to make sure that each day counts for the Lord. And something that's been very heavy on my heart over these past few days is the wonder and the glory of the all that the Lord has gone to prepare for us. Uh, we've been studying of late the book of Revelation, and we've got towards the end now of the book. And it speaks of John speaks of the wonder of the New Jerusalem. And you know, when you start reading about it, my mind just cannot take the wonder and the splendor that the Lord has gone to prepare for you and for me. And you know, I am convinced more than ever that in these days we have to keep our focus on what is yet to come. Because sometimes, I don't know about you, but you look around you and everything seems to be getting from bad to worse. And yet, as a believer in Jesus, we have a glorious hope. And the Lord's been reminding me so much of the importance of looking for what he has already prepared for us. Because something that the Lord's striking me about so much that when we pass into eternity, there is no beginning and no end. We can't understand in our minds. And yet what's happened in the past, what's happened in the future, as it were, has already happened in heaven. Because no, the Lord knows the beginning and the end. Because he is the Alpha and the Omega. And so what he's gone to prepare for us, he knew exactly when he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And praise the Lord, the Lord has got so much in store for us. But our Bible, the reading this morning, as we just consider these things, it's something that the Lord has spoken to my heart over these past weeks as I've been thinking about what the Lord would have us share this morning. I want you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians, into the book of Ephesians chapter 2. A very well-known passage of scripture. And we'll start to read Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 11. Therefore remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, the strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the enmity which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances that in himself he might make the two into one new man thus establishing peace and might uh, and peace sorry and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross by it having put to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household, having been built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets Christ Jesus himself be in the cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. <clears throat> what I want us to think about this morning is something that we around our area we see a lot of because we live just south of the Lake District and we're very close to the North Yorkshire Moors and whenever we go out for a ride sometimes something that we see which I don't know I'm sure you're all aware of is stones round where we are there's a lot of stone walls where the stones are placed together to form a field to keep the livestock in 
And uh, what I want us to think about the fact that the Lord says that we are as stones. But first of all, I want us to understand that God has chosen you and me to be a living stone. And what he wants to do with each one of us is to assemble us so that we become, as we've read there, a holy temple in the Lord. Now, I don't know whether you can imagine yourself as a living stone, but I trust this morning that we can just let your imagination run wild a little bit. But it's a wonderful term that the Lord uses in Scripture. And of course, we need really to turn to Peter to back up what we've just read. And if you turn with me to 1 Peter... 1 Peter, chapter 2, and we'll start to read for the sake of time from verse 4. And coming to him as to a living stone, rejected by men, but choice and precious in the sight of God, you also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood. So to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For this is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone. And he who believes in him shall not be disappointed. This precious value then is for you who believe. But for those who disbelieve, the stone which the builders rejected... This became the very cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offence. For they stumble because they are disobedient to the word. And to this doom they were also appointed. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. That you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Praise the Lord. What a privileged people we are this morning, aren't we? That we are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. I trust that that thrills your heart this morning. When we consider that out of all the people, God has chosen you and he's chosen me. Have you ever asked that question, why me, Lord? Why me? And yet the more I try and understand these things, the more amazing God's grace is coming, becoming to me. That why he chose me to be part of this holy temple that he is assembling together. Because I'm sure you do. I feel in my heart that the coming of the Lord will be very soon. The way things are happening. I don't want to get into that this morning. But the fact is that I do believe everything that is happening is pointed to the coming of the Lord. And therefore, I do believe that the Lord wants to prepare his bride, that's you and me, for his coming. Because we are living stones that are being assembled together. But it's interesting when we think about these stones, because we read in the previous part of the chapter in Ephesians, that he's joining two groups together. Therefore, those Jewish people that we call the Messianics, that become part of the Church of God, He's bringing two together. The Gentiles and the Jews are one new man we've read this morning in the Lord Jesus. And ultimately, on that great day, when we see the Lord, we will be joined with them in unity as part of the Bride of Christ. I have no doubt about that in my own mind. But this morning, I just want to imagine if I was to hand out a a yellow hard hat and we all put our hard hats on, we put our overalls on and we went to a quarry Not far from where we live, there is a big quarry. Uh, Our son lives much nearer than what we do. But there, you see, stone being chiselled out of this deep crater that they've created with getting the stone out. 
course, they use stone for all kinds of things, for foundations, for making roads, for buildings or whatever. But I want you to think this morning, I want you to have a picture, if you can, if you can picture in your mind's eye, going into a quarry and seeing these all massive rough peaks, pieces of rock. Now, in the Bible, and I want you to turn there, if you would be, would you go right back into the Old Testament, to 1 Kings, 1 Kings, chapter 6, And we just want to read one verse. This chapter of chapter 6 is talking about the building of the temple, King's, King Solomon's temple. And the stones were being prepared. And in verse 6, no sorry, verse 7, forgive me, chapter 6 and verse 7. And the house, that is the temple, while it was being built, was built of stone, prepared at the quarry, and there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any iron tool, tool heard in the house while it was being built. I believe that when we look at the temple, it is a wonderful picture of what the Lord wants to do with you and me. Because sometimes, whether we like it or not, the Lord wants to refine you and me and make us in what he wants them to what wants he wants us to be. Now we've read this morning that the Lord Jesus is a precious stone and he wants to make us like himself. Now we've read there that the, all the work was done in the quarry. And in those days they wouldn't have had the machinery that they have today. Everything would have been done by hand. So I want you to imagine if you pick up a big heavy hammer in one hand, you have a sharp chisel in the other hand, and you start chiseling away at these rough pieces of rock to make them into something that can be fitted together. Can I just suggest, I think that sometimes when we go through difficult situations in our lives, could it not be that maybe the Lord wants to use what he is allowing to happen in our lives as a part of the chiseling pro process to make us into something that is beautiful in his sight. You know, sometimes I know I've done it myself and I've had to ask forgiveness of the Lord. Sometimes you feel that when something just keeps going wrong and everything, it, it's just one thing on top of the other sometimes. That's how it feels. And you think, Lord, why? But then I've begun to realise, well, why not, Michael? Why not? Maybe there are some things that the Lord still wants to do to, my, to make me more like the one that I love and the one that I serve. And maybe it's a quarry experience where the master mason gets hold of the ammon and they start chiseling away so that ultimately something is beautiful that can be fitted together to form the holy temple of the Lord. A spiritual temple that the Lord is putting together. How we need to be careful that we don't grumble when hard times come. Because it could just be that Lord wants to chisel a bit more off so that we can fit together nicely. It's quite a challenge, is it not? But it's not any accident that these things happen because we're chosen. And if we're chosen, then if we allow God to do what he has to do, I have no doubt that he will make us into what he wants us to be. But of course we have to be willing. It's been wonderful to come and gather around the table of the Lord this morning. And share with you. In the reason as we've been thinking. And we will be thinking in a few weeks time. The reason that Jesus came into the world. Was to save you and to save me. That's the reason he came. But you know that's just the beginning. That is just the beginning. He wants us to mature. He wants to shape us and to fashion us so that we become more like him. Salvation is just the beginning. Unfortunately today, so many just stop in the, as it were, just as they were when they first came to know the Lord. They don't mature, they don't grow. And it saddens me when people don't want to get into the meat of the word. They're quite happy just to remain, to just know that they're saved. But my Bible teaches that the Spirit will help you 
to understand, but he will bring us into all truth. And I believe at the point of salvation, the Holy Spirit comes in, and that is the beginning of a working process to however long any one of us has to live upon this earth, to shape us and to fashion us into these living stones that we've read about this morning. And so remember, in John 15, verse 16, the Lord Jesus says that when we come to him, we must start to bear fruit for him. And we know that Paul goes on to tell us that what is this fruit? Well, in Galatians 5, verse 22, we read that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Each one of these, I believe, the Lord Jesus fulfilled. But I find it a tremendous challenge when we read about we should be bearing fruit of the Spirit because am I always patient as I ought to be? I'm not. Therefore, the Lord has to get his chisel and chisel a little bit more off to make me more patient. We could go through everything. Do I really know the joy of the Lord? Well, sometimes when things get on top of you, I have to say, no, I don't really always know the joy of the Lord. So the mason master gets, the master mason's father will get hold of his chisel and chisel a bit more off. He wants to make us more like him. And sometimes he allows us to go through difficult times so that he can place his chisel upon our lives so that we can become more like him because he's given his life to dwell within us but it's a working process. And I believe the nearer we come to the Lord coming again, it's more important that we do mature into what the Lord wants for each one of us. We have to continue, as the scripture says, abiding in him. We read in 1 Peter, a scripture that is taken out of the Old Testament, Behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone. The choice stone has already been laid. What we believe has already been laid. The foundation that was laid by the apostles after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, they were sent out. And the foundations of what we believed are already laid. The foundations have been laid. laid. The cornerstone is there. And I was brought up when I left school. I went into the building trade for some time. And I trained to be a joiner. And I was very often sent out on site. And it's interesting because... If you can imagine a really nice house, a really fancy house, I don't know if you've ever, you know, a stone-built house. When you come to the corner, you see a cornerstone, an L-shaped stone that is placed on the corner, and that is to give strength for two walls. When they're meeting at a right angle, or whether it be a bay or something like that, is to give strength to each wall. Now, Jesus is the cornerstone, and he is joined... The Jew and the Gentile are all one in Christ Jesus because he is the cornerstone. He holds the building together for Jew and for Gentile. And as we've read, we are one in Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? But it's the cornerstone that has already been laid. That ultimately, I do believe, will be realised when we see him face to face. And we will see all those believers, those Jews and all those that believe in Jesus will be gathered together unto him. But I find that incredibly interesting because our Lord Jesus is likened to a precious stone. A precious cornerstone. I want to encourage each one of you this morning that we are precious in his sight. He has chosen us. Even before the foundation of the world, he marked out you and he marked out me. Something that sometimes my brain can't comprehend. But all I know and I believe it because the scripture teaches it. That even before this world was created, he chose you and he chose me. And he is the precious cornerstone, but more importantly, he wants us to be precious also. Because we are precious in his sight. It's interesting. In Zechariah, I found a little interesting verse. 
you go into Zechariah chapter 9, and we'll read it from, let's see where we are, verse 16. And the Lord their God will save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they are as stones of a crown, sparkling in his hand. In his land. For what comeliness and beauty will be theirs. Grain will make them. The young men flourish and new wine. The virgins. Now I know this ultimately is speaking about God's people. But this morning we are. I trust believe that we are God's people. We have joined with them. So many today preach that we've replaced the Jews. But we haven't. How people can come to that conclusion. I will never ever know. But what I do know is the fact that we are sparkling <laughs> in his hand. Isn't that wonderful? So now I want you to see that even though he's assembling this t- holy temple, this spiritual building, just as the New Jerusalem, which we were reading the other night, is built of every beautiful and precious stone, sardis, all these beryl, all these wonderful <coughs> stones, he's preparing you and me and making us something precious that is in his sight. It's interesting that precious stones are often found in clay. You got that? Precious stones are very often found in clay. <coughs> they're taken out and they're honed in the fashion until they reflect light itself and they become sparkling. Now, I've never seen the crown jewels, but I've seen on telly when Her Majesty puts the royal crown on. You've got to admit it's beautiful because all the stones sparkle. That's exactly the kind of thing what the Lord wants to do with us. He wants to make us sparkle for Him. Unusual word to use, but I believe it's a good word. Are you really sparkling for the Lord Jesus in these days? Because as it gets darker... The brighter we should get to sparkle. We are the light. He is the light and he shines through us so that we can sparkle. All that a jewel does is reflect the natural light that is around it. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 it says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. But isn't it incredible? Now we are being transformed from a cut piece of stone that was found in the quarry. The Lord wants to then further hone us and shape us and fashion us so that we ultimately sparkle. Just like what the Lord has gone to prepare for you and me. This beautiful city that sparkles. The streets are made with gold. And everything we see will be magnificent because the radiance of the Lamb, it says will be our light. And everything will shine. But even now, as God's people, I do believe, we need to shine for Him. And in Job, chapter 14 and verse 9, we read a very interesting uh, verse. It says this, Water wears away stones. An interesting verse. As I've said, you know, because we're fortunate where we live, we, are, we see a lot of streams and all the stones there. You know, when you pick a stone up out of a brook or a stream or even a river, it's invariably smooth. It's very rare, unless it's been thrown in recently, do you find a stone that's jagged. Where did David go when he wanted to pick up the smooth stones to fling at Goliath? He went down to the brook. And he chose smooth smooth stones. Water wears away stones. Okay, let's think about this. So if we are a precious stone, it's ultimately water that wears us and shapes us in what he wants us to become. You know, if you ever watch, we enjoy watching uh, the repair shop, I think it's called, on on television. I, I I find it very interesting, the way that these can... We've, um, kind of make something that's almost falling apart, put it back together. And I remember some time ago, 
there was somebody that was uh, repairing some, I forget what it was, but it was some sort of jewellery or something. And he started to polish it and to buff it. And something that was dull and quiet, nothing to really take your eye, became something that was beautiful and sparkling. And he used water with a, a bit of stuff. I don't know what it was he put in, but it, it came up beautiful. It's interesting, we went up to Kedinal a few weeks ago and Owen was complaining that some, some of her jewellery got dull. And we just happened to ask the question why we was in this shop. And she says, oh, give it me. And she put it and she put it in this solution. It looked, just looked like water, but obviously it wasn't water. And it started to bring up a jewellery that had gone dull and it became sparkling again. So what is this water? Well, I'm sure you know better than what I do. And I'm sure you've been taught that in the scriptures, the Holy Spirit is very often, amongst many things, depicted as water and oil. Have you ever thought that it's the water of the Holy Spirit that is washing over us, that wants to make us into something beautiful? Something that sparkles, so that we might sparkle for the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord that when we were born again, it was the precious blood of Jesus that washed away our sin. But I know from experience that my garments of salvation that was given to me at that point, sometimes they get dirty. Because sometimes we walk in a situation where sometimes we can't help our garments getting a bit soiled. But I'm so thrilled that the Holy Spirit dwelling within me, as we read the scriptures, the Holy Spirit ministers to our hearts and we come back to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry we got involved in doing that and I shouldn't have done this. And we are cleansed again by the water of the washing of the word. Do you understand? Isn't it wonderful? The provision that the Lord has made for you and me so that we can ultimately be fashioned into what he wants us to be so that when he comes again, we're ready. That's the important thing. I believe the Lord is doing whatever he can to shape you and me into what he wants us to be before he comes again. Whether that be he takes us to himself or he comes in the rapture. The fact is that one day we are going to meet the Lord. And it's what we do now, as that song says, that counts. Are we willing to allow him to chisel away at us as hard as it might hurt us? Because let's be honest with you. I know that if you start hitting, it hurts. It hurts me and it wears my arm out now. Never used to, but it does now if I'm doing a bit of work. And it hurts. And sometimes things... We're put in a situation where it hurts. But it's how we react. Do we allow the Holy Spirit to bring out the fruit and to be patient? Sometimes we have to make sure that self-control is also put into play. All these things. This ultimately, because in Ephesians 5, it says this, that he might sanctify her, that's the bride of Christ, having cleansed her, by the washing of water with the word. Hallelujah. Remember, don't complain. Now don't get me wrong, sometimes the enemy wants to have a go at us. But remember this, that the enemy can't do anything without having the Lord consent. But look at it if, sometimes from a different perspective. Because it seems for Owen and myself there seems to be problem after problem after problem after problem. And sometimes I've never known anything like it in all my life. But I have to think, Lord, it's only because you love me. That's what you said in the scriptures. It's because you love me so much that you want to discipline me, to draw me back into line and to make me in what you want me to be. And sometimes it's hard. But I've started to realise I should never ever grumble. Because could it be the Lord wanting to just knock a bit off? Hone it a bit more so that I shine a little bit more for the Lord Jesus. We must allow the Holy Spirit working through what he allows to come into our lives to shape us 
and to fashion us. And as we read more, as we understand more of the depths of the wonder of this wonderful book that we are holding in our hands, as the, we allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us, to challenge us, to chasten us through the word that he gives us through the scriptures, that we might be made more like him. There's another wonderful verse that I found in Malachi. If you turn with me to Malachi. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 17. He says, And they will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I prepare, prepare my own possession. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Now, if you look in the authorised version, it says this, in that, on that day when I make up my jewels. Now, I remember years ago when I, thank the Lord, I was brought up in a Christian family. And I remember as a little boy singing a song. I don't know whether you older ones might remember it, but it goes something like this. When he cometh, when he cometh to bring forth his jewels, precious jewels, Precious jewels is loved and his own. Like the stars in the morning is bright crown adorning. They shall shine in their beauty. Bright gems for his crown. Yeah. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Doesn't that thrill you this morning that the Lord wants to make you and make me into a jewel? Mm. Something that's beautiful. That reflects the beauty of the Lord. Because a jewel, it hasn't got a, a battery inside it that makes it go bright. No, it doesn't. It's the light that it reflected from it. And that's what the Lord wants to do with you and me. He wants to make us into a beautiful uh, jewel so that ultimately on that great day, when we see him face to face, that we will shine. We will reflect his glory. Because as I said before, the scripture says there will be no need for the sun one day. The Lord will be our light. And all oh, that we might reflect now, begin to do it now. Not wait for glory, but now we should make a difference and we should be bright shining light, just like a jewel for the Lord. Praise the Lord this morning that the Bible says that we are being changed from glory to glory. He wants to change us. He wants us to make us just more like him. And I pray this morning that each one of us might just say, Lord, I don't understand sometimes why this is happening, why this is happening, why that's happening. But Lord, if you wanted to do something with me, then Lord, please do it. Please change me. Please make me more like you. We go to sing a song that I trust will be really put this all into perspective I hope I hope you know it but in our hymn book there's a lovely little chorus that is in the mission praise 382 and it says this I have trusted it might be our prayer this morning it says this Jesus take me as I am I can come no other way take me deeper into you make my flesh life melt away Make me like a precious stone, crystal clear and finally home. Life of Jesus shining through, giving glory back to you.